In today's video, we are inching a bit closer to being able to run trains. I built the eight jumpers that will connect the T-Track modules to the block detection device. At the end of the video, I set up the eight T-Track modules to visualize the current progress. Welcome to Humanity Junction, where the city intersects with humans. A quick reminder, my 500 subscriber giveaway is still open. Entries will be accepted until Saturday, September 12th at midnight Eastern Standard Time. Please check out episode 44 for the information on how to enter. The giveaway drawing will be live on Sidetrack Sunday this weekend, September 13th at 8 p.m. The live stream will be on my channel the second Sunday of every month. I hope you can join me live. And now, on to building the jumpers for my layout. If you are new to the channel, here's a little bit of the backstory. I live in a one-bedroom apartment in New York City with my girlfriend. There is not any room for a permanent layout, so I've decided to utilize T-Track modules for my setup. I am designing the setup so that it can be set up in about 30 minutes and taken down in about 10. The basics of the T-Track modules have been built, and the tracks have been wired to Anderson power pole connectors. In this video, I'm going to build the jumpers that go from the modules to the block detection device. I've already connected the Anderson power pole connectors to one end of the jumpers. In this video, I will complete the process. I purchased PET braided sleeving so that instead of jumpers being four individual wires, it is a single cable. I could have purchased 16.4 SJOW for the jumpers. This is what I have done for the cable that goes between the control box and the current sensing device. But for some unknown reason, I did it differently this time. I have no idea why. I'm running all of the wires from the modules to the block detection device. Seven of the modules will have a jumper with four wires. The one module with my spur that is set up for programming will have six wires. I have three different colors of cable sleeves and two different colors of heat shrink. So for the first six four wire jumpers, each one has a different color combination. The first thing that I do is slide a piece of heat shrink onto the wires that already have the Anderson connectors. Then I cut a length of the braided sleeve just slightly shorter than the wires. I slide the sleeve over the fish tape and then tape the wires to the fish tape. It feels a bit like sliding the skin off a snake getting the sleeve over the wires. To easily feed the wires through the cable sleeve, I am using fish tape. This is basically a piece of flat metal used for pulling wires through conduit. I then pull the heat shrink over the sleeve and using the hot air gun, secure the sleeve to the one side of the cable. I am sliding on a piece of heat shrink for later use. Then I go to the other side and trim the wires. Then I crimp on the metal contacts for the Anderson power pole connectors and build this side of the connector. The final step is using the heat gun to shrink the heat shrink to finish off the jumper. There is a tool for the Anderson power pole connectors that enable you to insert and remove the contacts from the plastic housing. But I don't have this tool, so I'm just using my fingers. Uh, my fingers really hurt from assembling all these connectors.
While building one of the jumpers, I forgot to thread the sleeve onto the fish tape before I taped on the wires. When doing this type of production work, it's important to remember to do the steps in the right order. For the last four wire cable, I used a piece of black heat shrink with two small rings of red to differentiate it from the other cable with the same color combinations. The six wire jumper is easy to tell apart just due to the number of connectors. Now that I have all the jumpers completed, the next step is going to be wiring up the Anderson power pole connectors to the current sensing device. I think I know how I'm going to do this, but I have a feeling it's going to change once I get into it. I decided to lay everything out on the floor to see if I'm missing anything. My main T-Track setup is going to be a straight section between each corner section. This setup is approximately 4 feet by 5 feet. I started with the two Kato foam and wood corner modules with a single module in between. I then connected my two double modules next to them, and then finished off the loop with the other two all wood corner modules and the single module. Before connecting the completed double module, I had to remove the wood pieces on the side that I added to prevent module damage. The railroad inspector even stopped by, but she could not figure out what I was doing. I stretched out one of the jumpers, and the length will be plenty long enough to connect everything together. It was really exciting seeing the full oval setup. I cannot wait until I finish the rest of the wiring and start running trains. In the next video, we will wire up the current sensing device. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments or questions below and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe and select the bell icon to receive notifications. Thanks again and have a great day.